this is breaking as we are recording, but Lana Del Rey, it looks like he's getting married. Uh, this is going to make everyone very excited because there are, for some reason people are obsessed with Lana Del Rey. Uh, but she has obtained a marriage license to get married to Jeremy Dufresne, I think is how you say his last name. Um, and that's her boyfriend. And according to the Laforge Parish Clerk of Court, Lana stopped by with her boat captain boyfriend on Monday and picked up a marriage license. <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast, Raw Rundown. My name is Adam Glenn. Over there is Dax Holt. Um, we are the Hollywood Raw Podcast. In the middle of the week, we do an interview with someone in the industry. It could be a journalist. It could be a paparazzi. It could be a celebrity. Who knows? This week, we had a Hollywood fixer. At the end of the week, we drop an episode where we give you the top 10 stories of the week. Um, how do we pick the top 10 stories? We pick, we go by Google search, we go by data. And lastly, it goes by our personal opinions, but most of the time it goes by the data. Uh, we aren't just two people who gossip about entertainment news. We are two decorated journalists with uh, a long, long, long time of experience. My name is Adam Glenn over there is Dax Holt. Dax, how are you, sir? I don't know if I'm so decorated or you're even so decorated. We more have like nominations, but we didn't actually win the awards. So we sure. kind of like are adjacent to decorated uh, journalists. But we'll you know what's so funny, it. Dex? You say that as you have all these trophies behind you. <laughs> That's the funny. The mo- you say that. People are like, what? What are those trophies behind you? I don't well, get the, it. The ones behind me are the ones I've won. But the nominations for losing Emmys are on this wall over here. So that that's that. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, busy week this week. I'm catching up on some TV. Um, I'm liking this Vince McMahon documentary, which I don't know. I'm curious if you're not a wrestling fan, if you'll enjoy this documentary on Netflix. I am am a wrestling fan. I'm not like a hardcore wrestling fan. I used to watch it more when I was younger. I still sort of appreciate it a little bit. I follow it moderately. Uh, but this documentary is fascinating. Are you watching anything good on TV, Dex? Uh, we watched – what did we sit down and watch? We watched My Worst X the other night on Netflix. Oh, it's so fascinating. It's so good. Is they it? Do, oh my God, dude. It's so like the first episode was about um, these women who had a boyfriend that would just, he started abusing his first girlfriend and then she called the cops on. I mean, she tells you how she escaped him multiple times, went back to him, escaped him again. But then he, he became like a serial beater, went to Vegas uh, uh, basically kidnapped a woman, locked her in her house for like weeks on end, was beating her, then went to another. I mean, it is the craziest thing. And you hear from these women about their their survival and how they got through it and how they went to the cops, but the cops like weren't doing anything to really help them out or would help them out, but then didn't lock him away, even though he had this really super violent past. I mean, again, My wife and I were just sitting on the couch like with our jaws on the ground because it was so wild. Um, But I think it's like a whole series. So there's numerous stories. I I thought it was fascinating. All right. I'll have to check that out. A show that I'm looking to watch that I plan to watch is there's Fox now has this new Baywatch show. It's about Hawaii lifeguards. Okay, It's not a reality show. It's more of like a series, but it seems like they're kind of going after that Baywatch audience and I don't know, something about Bay, uh, Hawaii and Lifeguard. I don't know. I think it could be – I, I, I'm going to actually plan to watch that show. One show that I am watching, uh, we're actually going to talk about in our Raw Rundown today. We're going to give you the top 10 stories of the week, so we're going to get into that show. I'm curious if you're watching that show because I think it's fascinating. Um, before we get to the Raw Rundown, we like to read reviews. Dax, do you have a review ready to go so we could get going with the Raw Rundown? <laughs> Yes, I do have one. All right, this one comes from Sweet Pea Guy, five stars, and it's titled Love, Adam, and Dax. It says, such a wonderful entertainment show. Adam and Dax have so much knowledge about this Hollywood and music and entertainment businesses. Their playful attitude makes my drive home so much more pleasant with a laugh here and there. You both are doing an amazing job. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Sweet Pea Guy. Appreciate Sweet it. Sweet Pea Guy, you're, you're doing as the... The title of your name, you're going to, you're, you're a sweet pea. We appreciate the reviews. The reviews, why do we ask for reviews, guys? We don't ask for money. We don't have a Patreon. When you give reviews, 
it boosts you up the algorithm as far as in searches, YouTube, as uh, and, and, and everything. And, and it goes up the charts and helps us out to make – it helps us pay the bills to put this podcast, to keep this podcast, keep the lights on. So we appreciate the reviews. If you already left one, thank you. If you want to leave another one, we would appreciate that even more. Keep them coming. And we'll actually, this is the best way to kind of give you a shout out live on the air. Um, I'm excited for the Royal Rundown this week because uh, I think we sort of know what's been taking over the news cycle. And we're going to kind of get into that and kind of give you what the latest is. Uh, before that, we have nine other stories. So Dax, let's start with number 10. Number 10. All right. Jennifer Aniston having a scary moment uh, the other day. Basically, her house was swatted. Cops showed up to her front door at midnight being like, uh, everything okay here. So what had happened was on Friday evening, law enforcement uh, got a call saying that they there was someone saying that they had a friend. They didn't name Jennifer Aniston by name, had a friend that they were worried about their well-being, that they had mentioned going over to the other side. And so they dispatched out uh, a, a couple cops to go check on uh, this home and they got there and they were, I guess they were intercepted by security because security's like, whoa, 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 what's happening? Why are the cops showing up? Um, and apparently it was Jen's house. They made sure that Jen was okay. She came to the door, but again, it was like midnight. Um, and so she said, look, I'm all good there. You have no wor- no need to be worried about me. And, uh, and this is just goes along with a massive string of these swatting incidences that have been happening for years and years and years. Yeah, Chris explain Brown, to, we, we keep hearing these swatting stuff. We've seen a mm-hmm. lot of celebrities. Chris Brown, who else is – who else has been the swatting decks? Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, Justin Bieber. But those are like the more of the recent ones. I mean, Lindsay Lohan, Paris, Orlando Bloom. I mean, there's been so many swatting incidences over the years where someone will call the cops, say that there is an active shooter or that this person is going to harm themselves or they're going to harm someone else. And so the police or the SWAT team, that's why they call it swatting, because a lot of times the SWAT team will come descending in on a celebrity's home and guns drawn they're they're worried about an active shooter come to find out there's ashton kutcher just like you know sitting in his living room like uh what's happening um and so it's essentially a prank that people pull on him but it's a very dangerous prank because you you're you got cops showing up to a home with guns in hand um and it, it obviously is a waste of resources it's a waste of money it's a waste of time and Uh, It kind of freaks everyone out and someone out there is getting a laugh off because at the end of the day, then this makes the news. And so you see it on the blogs, you see it on the internet, you see it everywhere because when cops show up to Rihanna's house, of course, everyone's going to talk about it. Um, So I think that they kind of get a laugh that they were able to cause such a commotion. Yeah. So do they catch the swatting people? No. Which, oh, do they no. call on? How are they able to – do they call on a pay phone? Like how are they able to kind of do this without getting caught? So this is like a whole thing. But they – it's actually you can – I hate to say it, but it's pretty simple online. You you can use these different websites that it's kind of like a – it dubs your number. So you go yeah. on the spoofing website and you'll put in three numbers. You put in the number you're calling, the number you want it to look like, and the number that you're actually calling from. And so when the call goes through, it could look like you're making a call from Jennifer Aniston's house. Like if you know her phone number, it'll come in to 911 and it'll look like her number. And they're like, oh, yep, this number is coming from this house. And then they send out the cops because it seems more realistic. And then they have a really hard time tracing these numbers back. Um, and they, they, they do that a lot. And so I know there's another way to do it using like, kind of like the hearing impaired phone lines yeah. where they can't record those calls. And so 911 isn't able to go get the phone logs from them about who's calling. And it's another way that they do this. And it's just, it's really bad because it, it's a massive waste of taxpayer money, time, resources, and honestly, it just scares a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, can we stop at the swatting? I, I guess you got your rocks off the first time. It's not fun anymore. It's not funny unless there's some person who's just getting, dude, you know what I did? It's kind of stupid. And like you said, waste of resources. It's a very it's a very weird thing. I don't know why. It doesn't happen really on the East Coast as far as what I hear. Like it's it's such an L.A. thing that happens. Mm-hmm. So many. I mean, I know the Phase Clan, which are like these big streamers. They just had a swatting incident recently in the last two weeks. 
it's just come on let's stop it. oh yeah i saw the video of them all standing outside with like their arms <laughs> yeah 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 it's gotta be pretty surreal if it happens to you you know if especially the guns are out you're, you don't know what's going 100%. on and i you know if you might just have something out it's a very weird situation but jennifer Anderson's well, we've okay. had at like at my office at trophy smack we've had like four or five cops come rolling in and i'm like and immediately your heart starts pounding. You're like, what's happening? What's going on? And they're like, hey, we just want to buy a trophy. I'm like, oh, good God. No, oh, my God. You gave me a heart attack in here. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, it's got to be the worst. All right, Dax, number nine. Uh, Julie Roberts. She is going to be a part of a new project that she is very excited about. Um, and it all happens to do with Elvis. So basically, she is getting the job of a lifetime, according to her. But she will be uh, narrating the new audiobook edition of Lisa Marie Presley's memoir. It's called From Here to the Great Unknown. Um, and I, I guess a part of this whole thing, there's going to be unheard interviews with Lisa Marie Presley and her daughter and all kinds of really interesting stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, Julia was very honored to be essentially the voice of Lisa Marie Presley because this book is written by Lisa Marie Presley. It was finished off by her daughter, Riley Kehoe. Um, and so she'll go in there. You'll hear from Riley, a, a part of the narration as well. Um, but this, uh, this book is highly anticipated. People love everything to do with, uh, Elvis. They obviously Lisa Marie Presley, huge part of pop culture and kind of the, the, the community, the music community. And so uh, I think people are excited to hear from her point of view, what it was like growing up with a super famous dad, losing that super famous dad, the legacy that uh, she was a part of, um, and then her untimely death. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I, but what is, this is really the job of a lifetime for Julia Roberts. I think, but I, I think she respects the Presley family so much. And for her, this is a big honor that was given to her. Like, Again, you are becoming the voice of Lisa Marie Presley when you are reading this book because Lisa is not here to read it herself. And so I think she just feels so honored that she was the one chosen. Yeah, well, I mean, I wonder if she's going to – what's more of the honor, her doing the audio book about Lisa Marie Presley or she just – it just came out that she is going to be inducting the Dave Matthews Band in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which – to me, also, I questioned why her rather than like anybody else. I think it's a weird choice. And trust me, I love Dave Matthews' band. I just don't know if I would pick her to be the one to induct you. I just don't see the correlation. Yeah, she could be a fan, but is she a mm -hmm. massive fan? Has she publicized before how much of a fan she is of Dave Matthews' band? I think there would be different choices, and it's just weird. Who would you know. choose? Who would you choose? I would try to go the musician route. I would go – I would see if there's another big musician who kind of looked up to them or kind of was a fan. Like it's weird. I, I've seen weird people. I went to last year's like ceremony and they've had other people like who did some induction stuff. I don't know. I just don't think Julie Roberts would be in my top 10 choices. I, what if, I understand what if you had star. found out – what if they were like, oh, well, Julia was just going to be there, but then Dave Grohl was supposed to present it and then they had to – get him out of there because everything going on so she stepped in what if it was something like that yeah doesn't i don't know i just don't i don't really see the relationship between julia roberts and dave matthews band i know they've been they've obviously had an ex, not experience and they've there are friendly i should say mm -hmm. that because they were at events i think it was like no what 15 years ago they were photographed so obviously they've met before i'm sure julia roberts i'm assuming is a big dave matthews band fan but why she's the one to induct them. It doesn't seem too rock and Don't roll. Don't you remember though? They had that song Satellite in um, Pretty Woman. You know what? You know it'd be a good... <laughs> yeah. Just I got kidding, an idea. people. Don't go look that up. That was a joke. Jokes. Dax, I got the perfect person to induct Dave Matthews Band in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Know who it'd be? Who? Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler has put Dave Matthews Band in his movies. So I think it'd just okay. be really fun to have Adam Sandler induct Julia Rob uh, induct Dave Matthews band into the whole rock and roll hall of fame, not Julia Roberts. And it's funny, Dave Matthews has been great. Dave Matthews has been unbelievable in Adam Sandler yeah. movies. He's funny. So um, that's yeah, a good one. Right? I like that. Yeah. 
All right, Julia. All right. Sorry, we've uh, we fired you from your position of inducting, and uh, yeah. we've handed that over to someone else. Sorry, sorry, Julia. Uh, number eight. <laughs> Hope that wasn't her other second job of a lifetime. All right, uh, <laughs> Miley Cyrus and Dolly Parton are apparently distant relatives. You know, we we've obviously known that they are very very close. Uh, she uh, Dolly is Miley's godparent. She is her godmother. And so she, they, the two of them have been very, very close for many, many years. They've talked about their relationship, all of that. But apparently, uh, there is some actual genealogy, family tree uh, stuff going on between the two of them. And uh, I guess it's, uh, let me see. It said, a genealogy and family tree tracking site ancestry is the name of the site, announced on Monday that... Uh, by using billions of historical records in public family trees, they've discovered that the two uh, musician powerhouses are actually seventh cousins once removed. Hmm? <laughs> I Did mean, you, what I kind of feel like mean? we're all seventh cousins once removed, yeah. but we're going to go with it. Um, I guess there was a guy named John Brixby, or Brick, Bricky, who was born in Virginia in 1740, according to them, and that is Parton's sixth great grandfather and Cyrus's seventh great grandfather. So there you go. They they are apparently actually relatives. That is so bizarre. That I mean, how you even do the research to find? But is that even accurate? It, do you believe that all that stuff? Because you know, 23 Me has had some like problems. As yeah. far as proving their accuracy. So I don't even know if that could really be that accurate. I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? Access Hollywood actually asked Dolly. They said, you know, what do you think of this? And she said, we are so close. Miley and I, I would have thought we would have been at least third cousins. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me because she already does feel like family. So uh, Very she had cute. a Very funny nice. response to it. All right. Yeah, uh, what is up with 23 and Me? I, I saw the the other day there was news about their entire board quitting because the CEO wants to go private. As I don't know, dude. It seems like they're struggling with uh, that company. Yeah, that's. Uh, have you ever done any of that stuff? The mm -mm. yeah, you? I don't really think. I, no, I don't really care enough. I'm like, oh, cool. What am I going to do? It's what if they it's not going to change anything. Like, what if they're like you're related to a monkey? I mean, I am. Uh, no, I don't. I don't need any, uh, you know, second opinion. I know I am. I've seen the way I eat bananas. It's not. I, uh, so I. Because you make so, eye contact while you eat them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I make eye contact. Somehow I. You eat, eat them. You eat them for the bite. shape, not the taste. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Let's. Go. Uh, number seven. <laughs> Sorry, that was too many jokes at your expense. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cardi B and Offset, uh, their divorce is getting pretty nasty very quickly. Um, you know, it seemed like it was very cordial at the beginning, but it has gone downhill. She did a, uh, a live stream the other night. And, uh, I think this was on Wednesday night. She hopped on Instagram Live and just started kind of going off on relationships and men and uh, men feeling like they're entitled to pr like certain property when they didn't earn it. So clearly it was focused at offset. Um, but the craziest part was at one point during this live session, offset commented on the stream and he said, you fucked with a baby inside of you. Tell the truth. And, uh, and you just see everyone like, Oh my God. Like he basically said that she was cheating while she was pregnant. Um, and that is what's been one of the big turns. Uh, she did post on X like a little bit later and did. So I don't really know what that means and did. Okay. I don't know if she's acknowledging that she cheated. If she's yeah. not, I, I don't really know. Sometimes, um, you know, she's kind of all over the place, so it is what it is, but there has been a lot of cheating allegations that have surrounded them. He denied rumors recently that he cheated on her with another woman. Um, but now she, he's calling her the cheater. I, the whole thing is crazy, but the, the, I know that they've got property that's involved. Um, and she's basically saying, I'll see your ass in court. Let you want to go to war. We'll go to war. Um, which is sad at the end of the day, they got three kids together. You don't want to have to see these kids watch their parents go to war with each other. Cause it seems so cordial recently. Like they, they were just hanging out together the other day. And now, 
uh, it's kind of taken a turn for the worse. Yeah, that's uh, it's sad when divorces go bad. You know, you just want everyone to be happy. But who we've talked about Cardi B in the past and how much when mm-hmm. she speaks, we listen because there's so much she doesn't have a team speaking for her to. She's coming from her herself. When you hear Cardi B kind of dealing with this and speaking on this, what are your thoughts on the situation? Because it's Cardi B. Usually I have my own opinion, but because it's coming from the horse herself, Cardi B herself, I should say I'm not calling her a horse. It's just the slogan. But uh, Look, Drake, what are your thoughts right, on Right this? from the horse's mouth. Right from the horse's mm-hmm. mouth, yeah. That's what they say? Um, yeah. I, that's the thing. She She wears – like her heart on her sleeve, she doesn't hold back from much. And so I tend to believe her because I don't feel like she is one of those people that hides a lot of the facts. Like she just says it out how it is, whether it makes her look good or bad, she just says it. She doesn't have the filter, which I like because then I'm like, okay, I, you're being authentic. Like that is one thing that I think I really like about Cardi. She is very authentic uh, for, for better or worse. She's authentic. And so I think that we are seeing her live in in real time being frustrated about a situation going out and talking about it. And if he called her out about being a cheater and her response was and did, and if that really means, and so I did, um, again, that's her acknowledging that maybe she did cheat on him, but that doesn't change the fact that she doesn't want to give up her hard earned money, property, all of that stuff because they had cheating in in a relationship that was already kind of going south yeah um again i i'm always like sort of team. there's only one person i always kind of believe them when they speak and it could be i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing it's cardi b it's only because she speaks herself you know yeah. i mean when i say it's coming from her social media she kind of gets ahead of everything and i i have to imagine she's controlling her social media just on the way the wording goes so yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, She's de- well, because you know anyone else if they were if they were in charge that they would stop her from ninety nine percent of the things that she does. True. Very but true. those ninety nine things are what makes her so likable is because she doesn't have the person holding her back saying don't do this. Like potentially it comes off wrong or whatever. Like she's just her. So great. Uh, Dax number six. All right. So you had brought up earlier this Netflix show that you were watching. Well, we're going to talk about it. I didn't bring it, it up. Uh, actually, I was I, I said I was going to get into You know, we actually were going to discuss the show later. But yes, this story is about the Menendez story on Netflix. Have you watched the Menendez Brothers show on Netflix at all? I have not. So there is a new Netflix show called Monsters, the Lyle and Eric Menendez story. Um, it was produced uh, by Ryan Murphy, and it's getting a lot of criticism um and he is now responding to that and it's ryan murphy defending his work and responding to eric menendez criticism of the series which is being con- called a dishonest portrayal um and so it, you know ryan says look uh, i see that eric is maybe not happy about the whole way that this uh story came out he goes i think it's interesting because i know he hasn't watched the show So he goes, I find that curious. He goes, I hope he does watch it. I think if he did watch it, he would be incredibly proud of Cooper Koch, who plays him. uh, Because what I'm being told, I haven't watched it myself, but what I'm being told is that they really show this from a victim's perspective. And I'm going to say victim because um, the Menendez trial was a lot about, obviously, these two rich guys in Beverly, I think it was Beverly Hills or Brentwood, that killed their parents. But what you found out through the trial was that their father was abusing them all the time, like every day, nonstop, uh, really just sick and perverse things. And they ended up killing him. So there was this like controversy of, well, these are two kids that were abused for years and years and years. And finally they had had enough and they, they wanted revenge. And so you're like, but they, So who is the monster in this situation? And I think that's what it comes down to. Is it the father that was this sexual abuser or was it the kids who killed the dad? Who's the monster? So I think they show a lot of what it was like for these kids growing up and what they went through. And I think that's why he's saying, I think that Eric might actually 
be happy with that side of the story being told that maybe hasn't always been told because they just look like killers for no, you know. Anyway. Yeah. Ryan Murphy, this guy puts out hits. Anytime this guy has his name on a show, I would suggest check it out because the show, it's like American Horror Story, Glee. Now this, I'm sure he's done other things. I mean, they're just, they're phenomenal He, he shows. rocks it. I yeah, think he's, he's got a really good research team as well because I feel like they always show things that maybe you didn't catch when the trial was active or stories behind the stories. Um, but he, he also went on to say that, you know, this is a 30, 35 year old case. He goes, we show many, many, many perspectives. That's what the show does in every episode. You are giving a new theory based on people who are either involved or covered the case. Some of the controversy seems to be people thinking, for example, that the brothers have had an incestuous relationship. There are people who say that never happened. There were people who said it did happen. So he he goes into, you know, each topic from a different perspective. And that's what makes, I mean, Ryan Murphy, just, he's a genius. He really has done amazing things. And he's, he gives people work that maybe are, haven't had a chance in a while. I remember Cuba Gooding Jr. He gave him a chance on the OJ thing, kind of brought him it. back into yeah. the entertainment industry. Like the dude's awesome. Yeah. I, again, every show he's done when he did the OJ, now Menendez, it's just shot so well. They're, they're just really great watches. I'd, I would suggest people check out this Menendez brothers story. Not if you you don't really have to be interested in the case. It's just I don't know. It's just a really fun watch. Jack, check it out. Uh, all right, number five. All right, Ellen DeGeneres is uh, responding to all of the mean behavior and workplace toxicity, the whole scandal in her new Netflix special. You know, we talked about the fact that this scandal, or the scandal, this Netflix special was coming out, I think, on last week's rundown. Well, now people are getting to watch it and kind of hear what she had to say. And she's calling this, by the way, her final stand up show. Whether that is true, I don't know. Didn't we say uh, that, by the way? We said last week, I think this is going to be her last hurrah. And she's going to go into the – I think we said that last week. And I can't imagine her keep doing stand-up. I think she's just going to kind of think? Do you think she'll be done and done for sure? I think from stand-up, yes. I think the only thing she will do is an occasional media appearance. And I think what she would do is – she would do voiceovers. I think that's the only thing she would do. I don't think it's worth her. I don't think she has the confidence to build. And I'm just saying this from the outside looking in. I mean, it takes mm -hmm. confidence to stand up, but I don't think she wants to host an award show. I think she's done it. She's over that. I don't think she wants to host another show. I don't think it's worth the time to do a podcast. Everyone has a podcast. I think the only thing that would bring her out of the house to actually work is a voiceover gig because that's like the best fun, nice for kids. I mean, who doesn't want to do stuff like that? Hmm. Okay. I don't know. But I saw the special. I saw I saw half of it. From okay. The half and what do you saw, think? It's fine. Is it is it Chris Rock bigger and blacker? Is it like a Jerry Seinfeld? Like it's not to me a memorable special. It was almost like hearing where she's at now and hearing her address everything with a few light jokes. It was almost like her monologue, like a long form of her monologue. It wasn't was I, I was entertained or I was amused because I was interested in what she's going to say next, but I wasn't going crazy cracking up, but also I'm a, but I'm did a you get, a, did you get up. a good laugh out of it? Like, was she, was she good about like mentioning the scandals and getting you to like, uh, okay. Did you like her more after watching it? I appreciate her take. You know, I, I didn't, it, I didn't like her or not like her less. Like it was just, everything was just the same. Um, it was my thoughts on her, which she's just Ellen DeGeneres. I, no, she's she's Ellen DeGeneres. I respect her. You know, mm -hmm. she would never. She was never an asshole to me. So, and I can only judge people how they are to me. But she was never, you know, mean to me. Well, did you do you think she deserved to be kicked out of the entertainment business for what she did? <sighs> no, because she might not even realize the stuff she was doing. You mm -hmm. know, and other people are like, man, she's being a bitch, but she maybe didn't even realize that how she was being perceived by other people. So at the end of the day, she, uh, yeah, I don't know. What I got out of it was that I don't think she, I don't think she ever planned on being the person in charge of a show and being like, I think she was happy to be the host and be the person in front of the camera, 
but I don't think she ever planned on running the whole thing and being the exec producer and having this massive staff under her and what that kind of responsibility takes. And I think she acknowledges she, she effed it up. Um, but I think there's probably a lot worse bosses out there. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. She, she, I would I would question if she did more good for people than she did negative. If you know what I'm saying, like at the end of the day, the amount of smiles, laughter, happiness she brought to America and the amount of money that she gave away to, you know, all the the Mother's Day shows and pregnant women and helping them get on their feet for their first pregnancy or the money she gave away during all of those segments. Like, did she do more good or do people just like to watch someone fall off their pedestal? So, yeah, she made a lot of people's lives miserable that worked for her, but they also chose to work for her and they could have left. I don't know. That's that's, I think, the struggle where do you say this person, it erases every good that they have ever done from 20 years or whatever she was on television. Um, I, I don't know. That that might be my take there is, did she do more good or more negative? And I would probably lean to say she probably did a lot more good for people. Yeah, I mean, Dax, I hear the stuff that she was doing. And I think we've been around a more toxic work environment. Like, uh, I think another environment that me and Dax maybe participated in was much worse. I just think there's a lot of negative <laughs> work environments in Hollywood in general. Uh, honestly, I think Hollywood in general is a very toxic place and you almost grow immune to it. And so for every Ellen story, there's probably 25 more, you know, that are, are that are out there. Um, unfortunately, again, I think people like to watch a celeb fall and crumble and it's like they get joy in it. So that sure. became more of an exciting story to talk about than any of all the good things that she ever did. All right, Dax, number four. All right. Number four, Artem. How do you say his last name? Do you know? I don't know. Let's say him. Nikki Jibinsk- Artem Chivin from Dance with the Stars. Artem from Dance with the Stars. No, spell, sound out his last name. Artem Chigvintsev. 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 We're going with that. So we're going with Artem from Dancing with the Stars. No <laughs> criminal charges will be uh, following him after this whole domestic violence arrest. Though this is a big win for him, uh, but he will not be criminally charged following that domestic violence uh, incident on August 29th in Napa Valley, um, which involved obviously uh, Nikki Garcia, his wife, well, his estranged wife at this point. Uh, but they said they actually made a press release, which is not usual for the district attorney office to make a press release, especially up there, um, that they have this decision not to charge him after they made a thorough review of the criminal investigation and a careful evaluation of the evidence presented to the DA's office. They said, while we take every arrest seriously and stand firmly against domestic violence, we have an ethical obligation to file charges when supported by the evidence. Uh, we are required to prove that there were even criminal uh, were sorry, we required to prove any and every criminal charge beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the highest standard of the American criminal justice system. If the available evidence doesn't rise to this level of proof, we cannot ethically file charges. And then they actually acknowledge that they're like, we don't typically issue press releases, but because this has been such a high profile case, we want to put it out there. Um, and this is big for him because at the end of, up until this got filed, everyone's like, oh, wife beater, wife beater, wife beater, even though we don't even know really what happened that night, that's immediately where your brain goes because she's filed for divorce. You know, he got arrested, but now the cops are saying, oh, there wasn't really any evidence of that. We are not going to file any charges against him. So, um, so Dex, just because he was arrested but he was Mm -hmm. not charged. Does he get to still work on Dancing with the Stars? Do you think he should be able to get his job back, potentially? Um, Well, I think this helps. I think it helps for sure. Um, You know, with anyone, if you are, you know, you are found as 
innocent or that you shouldn't be charged for something, then I would say, yes, it, it already stains reputation, no matter what, yeah. at the end of the day, there's going to be a lot of people that heard the first story that don't end up hearing this follow-up story. And so they will then go on with their lives thinking that Artem is a terrible person. That is true. I think the the stigma, the reputation is already there on him. He's already being labeled as something, even though he's, you know, he, he was arrested, not, you know, I just think that unfortunately he's going to have that on his resume. And it was such a big story that people aren't going to forget about that. But are we going to ever find out what exactly happened that night between Artem from Dance with Stars and Nikki Garcia, formerly Nikki Bella? I could see one of them doing a sit down interview. I think, I think there's an outlet out there that would pay them tons of money to talk about it. It's going to be whether or not they feel that it's worth it. Cause you're going to blow up your relationship with your ex and you do have a child together. You know what I'm saying? So are you going to make your lives miserable if you go and you talk publicly to the press? It might not be worth it for them. Do you think it's something like this, even though Nikki was not arrested, it affects Nikki for work in the industry? Hmm. Not Will it work against her? I don't think so. I don't think so. Nah. No? Okay, because there's so people, much competition you know, for she, work. She, I didn't know. I don't think so. She's she's a big name. I think she's in demand. Um, I don't think this tarnishes her. I mean, if anything, it's people are talking about her. She's one of the most trending topics right now. Maybe it helps her land some more jobs, if anything, because people are like, ooh, if she comes and she hosts another hot dog eating contest like she did a couple of weeks back, it's getting coverage that maybe it wouldn't necessarily because she's such a a big polarizing topic right now. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dax number three. Uh, Hayden Panettiere blasting critics um, for basically making fun of her or being worried about her because she had a a little bit of a slurred speech during an interview. And Mm -hmm. uh, she did this whole People Magazine interview. They put out a bunch of clips and uh, one of the clips she was talking about losing her brother who who passed away in 2023 and how much this this really weighed on her. I mean, they were like best friends and she lost her brother and it really took a toll on her life. And she opened up. She was being very vulnerable. And of course, you go to the lo- online and everyone is just going after her, saying that she's slurring her speech, that she looks out of it, she, that she, you know, they're, they're starting to question sobriety, all kinds of stuff. And she was like, damn, guys, like I'm talking about losing my brother and you're ripping me apart here. So she put out a, a statement. She said, I would like to take a moment to address the controversy surrounding an interview I recently completed with People Magazine. She goes, it's unfathomable that I am even in this position, but I feel forced to address it in a space where I won't be criticized on how fast or slow I speak. Uh, she goes, I haven't, I hadn't slept for two days prior to the shoot due to one of my dogs who was recovering from an emergency surgical procedure. It was an eight hour shoot followed by an on-camera interview that was supposed to last for one hour. The interview started well. And for the record, it's beginning its beginning is not included in the version People Magazine posted. I was exhausted. My reps stopped the interview early as it became obvious that I was fading, especially as the subject matter became heavier. As we asked the interviewer if we could redo it another day or do a follow-up interview on Zoom. She goes, I was assured that our interview wasn't necessarily, uh, wasn't ne- necessarily and wasn't told that she, oh, sorry. She was assured that another interview wasn't necessary and that um, she gave an emotional and heartfelt interview. So they said they would edit the piece together and make her look beautiful. Clearly, that's not exactly what happened. And she kind of I think she feels burned by People Magazine. But I think she's also like I opened up and I talked about something that was so private and so personal to me. And yet again, the world is attacking me. Were they attacking her? In the first place, I mean, I was, yeah, she struggled. Start? She's she struggled with substance abuse. She's had issues. She she's gone through a lot, and um, yeah, I think that uh, people weren't very kind online. I'll tell you what: if you asked me ten years ago, like celebrities to bet on that were going to be huge, yeah. she was one of them. Oh, 
hundred percent. Heroes. Do you remember how famous she became off Heroes? Like remember instantly. In Varsity Blue. Uh, not, uh, what was that? The Denzel Washington. Remember the Titans when she was a little girl? You're like mm-hmm. something about this girl. She has a lot of charisma. And again, like I said, if you asked me to bet on celebrities, who's going to be the big star? I would have bet on her. Hundred percent. It's just wild 100%. what her career has come down to. I, I don't know if it's because of some of the guys she's dated. You know, she was in a in some weird relationships. Uh, I wouldn't say weird, unique relationships because she's a small girl. And remember, she was dating the boxer who was mm-hmm. like two feet tall. Like, I mean, I say two feet. I mean, almost like three feet taller than her. Like, it was just like, but it's sad. Oh, what I mean, was it? Vladimir Klitschko or whatever? Vladimir Klitschko, which it was just a very, love is love. But visually, it yeah. was a unique pairing. So I think people are caught off guard by that. And then obviously, there were some other setbacks and some another relationship she was in. So it's... Um, it is sad. It is I was, sad. I was thinking about this the other day because this whole like concept of who you thought would become the biggest star on the planet versus who actually did. But I remember years back when Girl Meets World was filming, I went uh, to visit Danielle Fischel on set and I, I was there. Ben Savage was there. So I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm like getting to hang out with, you know. Corey and Topanga. Um, but I got to meet Rowan Blanchard, who was kind of like the big star of that show. And then Sabrina Carpenter, I got to meet Sabrina Carpenter. And I oh, thought, wow. I was like, but in back then, Rowan was like the star of the show. And Sabrina was like, her friend, you know, yeah. I would not have guessed that Sabrina Carpenter would be to the level of fame that she is at, at this moment. Like she is huge. Her songs are on the radio every time we turn on. I mean, we go from radio station to radio station because we're like, oh my God, how many times are you going to play Expresso? I'm going to change the station. And then it's on the next station. You're like, okay, next station. I, was on the, I mean, she is so famous now. And I would have, I mean, never guessed that this is where her fame would have been. Yeah. Um, I've guessed wrong before. I guessed that, uh, I guessed that Lady Gaga was not going to be the star she is today. And I was wrong. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I've been wrong on that, but one person, no, I guessed on who would be a big star. And I was like, man, this guy is the man is Miles Teller. And I don't even think people would realize how big he is. I think he's just so grounded that he doesn't mm-hmm. do like the Leo stuff. He doesn't hide, even though he's not on social yeah. media. He's with a wife who's very active on social media. And he, that crowd he hangs in is very public on social media, like the, the Nina Dobrevs and stuff. But if I was him, I'd hide a little more. And I think I, I don't want to, I don't want to brag, but I did call. Justin Bieber before a lot of people. I, I got the first report of him on TMZ way back before anyone knew who the hell he was. And then Billie Eilish was another one that I saw her upcoming and I was like, oh, this girl's going to be huge. Okay. I bet John Mayer. I, I was like, oh, John Mayer. And this was back when he was doing like community television. I was like, oh, this guy is good. And then this <laughs> community huge. television he was really? doing like random small gigs and I, I mean i wasn't working in media at the time and like tv or anything but yeah. i was like dude this guy's gonna take off yeah this was on room for squares album and it was like right even before it kind of even took off i was like who is this guy this is interesting and then now he's huge uh, i miss john you know, mayer. i miss the old john mayer i just wish he was I, I, people I, realize how I'm funny he too. is and i think we all he's shit so on him too much his, no you know yeah. what it was he got burned so bad with the Jennifer Aniston relationship. And I think he, he kind of messed that relationship up by talking and stuff. And I don't think he meant to, I think he was just, that's who he was. He was Mr. Like, I'm fun. I'm entertaining. And I think he probably really regrets that that one went, went away. And then he like disappeared out of the spotlight after that. He was like, "Ah, I screwed that all up. Well, people try to say like, get kind of shit on him. Like, Oh, why is he trying to be funny? I was like, dude, he actually is is funny. funny. And real comedians respected him. They're like, no, he's actually funny. And I think those guys are good critics on what's funny and what's not. I think they have a better batting average. Um, yeah, it just he's I, I just missed that John Mayer. All right, Dax number two. Uh Hoda Copy. This is huge. Hoda Copy is uh leaving the Today Show. Um, she has been one of the main anchors on the Today Show for God, so many years. I, I don't even know how long she's been doing it, but I feel like she is the Today Show. Um, but she announced on Thursday morning that she will still remain at NBC News with some role. They, they weren't too specific of what that role would be. 
um, but she is going to be leaving the co-anchor chair um, in early 2025. She basically just said, look, I'm, I'm, I've turned 60 and it's such a monumental moment for me that I turned 60 years old because I started thinking about that decade. Like, what does that decade mean? What does, what does it hold? And, you know, at the end of it, she just said, I need to allocate more time to family and less time to work because time goes by very quickly. And next thing you know, you're out of it. And all you did was work and you didn't get to spend that quality time with your family. And I totally get that. And, um, you know, Savannah, Savannah, who is her co-host just said, you know, I, I respect you so much for being at the height of your career and being brave enough to exit when you are literally at the the peak of your career. And that's hard for people to do. Um, and she said it's inspiring and um, uh, that's going to be a big blow to the Today Show. Um, I think it's going to be tough for Savannah because there is a lot of chemistry that you need for these morning shows that does not come easy. It does not come often. And that will now have to be switched up. I give her a lot of credit. Like, like they said, she's leaving the show at the height of her career because um, she wants to be with her family, which totally understand. The good part is she already made her money. She did very, very well. She's written books. She's done that. She got a very good paycheck from the Today Show. So the money, she made enough money where she should be totally fine and comfortable. Her kids will, their college tuition's paid. Their kids' home, future home is probably paid. Um, Hoda, personally, one of the sweetest people. Hoda is the same person on screen as she is off screen. She's the, she always has great energy. She works her butt off. Even when she was doing the the 10 a.m. hour with just Kathy Lee before she kind of took on the early hour, she was going to the gym at 5 in the morning in Rockefeller Center and then just showering and going to tape the show. So she worked hmm. really hard. Just one of the sweetest people. I love Hoda. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, it sucks because she was probably one of the last of the old, for me, hierarchy hosts that I had like a good relationship with. She follows me on Instagram. Um, but yeah, it's... Love Hoda. I'm going to miss her. Uh, I'm still a Today Show guy. If you had to pick Dex between Good Morning America, what you rather wake up to? Good Morning America or the Today Show? What would you pick? I'm not going to lie, but GMA. I love GMA. Really? Um, yeah, I love it. And I don't watch a lot of television. Um, but in the morning when I get back from the gym, I do put on GMA. And you know what it is? I think I like how they do their first like 15 to 20 minutes of their show. They like hit on all these really big stories and get me caught up. I mean, it's literally the raw rundown for news in yeah. the morning very quickly. Um, and so I, I like the first 20 minutes of GMA is really what it comes down to. And so I watch that and it hits at the perfect time from seven to seven twenty. Then my family's up. It like, it works for me. So I like them. No, I, I grew up more of a Today Show guy. I loved Matt Lauer. When Matt Lauer opened up the morning at 7 a.m., I, I thought it was the best. Um, I was the, yeah. I was a, the way the show was structured, I loved the 7 a.m., the 8 a.m. hour. Once I get the later hours, I'm not really a fan. The 10 a.m. hour stinks. The 9 a.m. hour stinks. But the 7 a.m., like you said, it's a really – the way they present the news at 7 a.m. is just kind of like nice. Um, all right. Yeah. Dax, the number one story of the week – Number one story of the week is all about Bai Ling. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you remember Bai Ling? <laughs> Bai Ling, man. She took us. She, had, she took her. Uh, oh, man. She took over my uh, my my news cycle for about a year. It was like, who is this Bai Ling? It's like she was just everywhere <laughs> working it so hard. She was good. Okay, sorry. No. Number one story obviously is Diddy. Once again, um, there has been so much information that's been coming up about all of his infamous parties, all of these old clips that are now resurfacing online about people talking about his parties. Um, but uh, basically, if for some reason you've been living under a rock and you haven't been following this, you know, he is now facing several sexual assault and abuse allegations from multiple people. He was arrested in New York City on December or September 16th, and he was charged with sex trafficking and racketeering. There was a 14 page indictment where he was accused of orchestrating parties that are known as AKA freak offs um, in which there would be elaborate and produced sex performances that would take place. In this indictment, which is uh, getting a lot of uh, social media play, 
Diddy. Uh, Diddy has allegedly forced women into engaging in sex acts with um, basically sex workers, male sex workers using drugs. And then he would masturbate during them and uh, often electronically record the interactions with these people. So it kind of have it as a backup so they wouldn't go and talk about it. He'd hold it over their head like blackmail. And also in the indictment, it also revealed that Homeland Security discovered various freak off supplies when they raided his homes in March, including narcotics. And this is the big one, more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant. And that has become the biggest joke online right now. Everyone making um, baby oil references and jokes and all this kind of stuff. Um, but in the last couple of days, there has been a lot of people that have gone back and find old episodes like Ashton Kutcher, um, he was on a, 19, uh, a 2019 episode of Hot Ones interview where he was asked about uh, ever attending a Diddy get together or a party. And he goes, oh, I can't tell. Like He was like, oh, I've got one, uh, a lot that I can tell you. Oh, wait, no, I can't tell you about that one. Can't tell you about that one either. I'm actually cycling through all of the Diddy party stories. And man, uh, some weird memories are coming down that lane. Um, you know, so... There was jokes about that. Uh, there was people that would do interviews and be like, hell no, I would never go to one of his parties. Like, never going to catch me there. I think Ice, uh, Ice Cube was one of those people that said, nope, not going to catch me with those uh, on any of those mother effing tapes, which I thought was interesting because it's a reference to a tape and he's and Diddy is accused of videotaping. So that wait, that so he made that com- he made that comment back when? Um, he made it in, um, during a Not September recently. 20. Oh, no, he did. No, he did oh, make okay. that recently. September 22nd concert in Vegas. Um, oh. basically said though, like, you're not going to catch me on any of those tapes. And then, uh, who else there? There was like so many people that came forward. Chloe Kardashian. There was an episode from 2014 of her on keeping up with the Kardashians, where they were asking her what she did that weekend. And she goes, oh, we were in Vegas with a bunch of my friends. Uh, And she was like, you know, French Montana and Diddy and saying that they went to this party. And she goes, most of the people were like half naked. I know. I I mean, the list goes on and on of all these old clips. 50 Cent, Ray J, Cat Williams. Cat Williams was a really actually interesting one. So he did this interview in January with Club Shay Shay podcast and he he said, you know, Diddy was wanting him to go to a party. He goes, I've turned down $50 million four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about, right? <laughs> he goes, um, he goes, I, I turned down an offer to attend a Diddy party during uh, uh, that interview. He goes, because Diddy want, would be wanting to party and, and you got to go tell him no. You got to tell him no. I did. See, I got it. receipts and everything. I'm telling you, that's why I can't say them freely. And I mean, listen, it sounds like even big stars were like, I don't want to get wrapped up in the crazy shit Diddy's doing. So I see this as being one of those stories that is not going away anytime soon. So buckle up. Yeah, I mean, the lawyer spoke out because there's you see all the stories about there's a thousand bottles of baby oil found at his house. Now, the lawyer is being a lawyer and saying, well, it wasn't actually a thousand bottles of baby oil, but there was a lot of baby oil. And he said that there was a Costco down the street. He liked to get his baby oil in bulk. I'm sorry, but that is an absurd amount of baby oil. That is it's, it's dumb very because- odd. Like Costco, you you don't normally go buy a pallet of baby oil, right? Like Costco makes ridiculous size stuff. So, you know, instead of buying one loaf of bread, you have to buy two loaves of bread. You don't go to Costco and go, I would like the entire pallet of bread to take home, please. Like that doesn't make sense. So no one in their right mind is going to have a thousand bottles of baby oil. Like that just... That doesn't make sense. So yeah. this is clearly on another level of needing lube to the max. Yeah, so that was a bit weird thing. And then uh, uh, Costco spoke up and said, "We don't. Uh, P. Diddy has never bought baby oil from us. In fact, we don't even sell baby oil like that. Did and, they really? That kind of case, yeah, but so Costco spoke up and gave a statement saying, <laughs> no, we, we don't do that. So, Dude, when Costco has to get involved and be like, no, 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 guys, we need to distance ourselves from Diddy, then you know it's a big deal. 
I think so. I've had celebrities reach out to me, and I'm not gonna say the names, but they're curious of like, hey, what's on these videos? Do you know who got caught? Is this person, that person on there? And I, I all I could tell you is this: is that the only thing I know is on side. He did. He had a big publicist working for him. That guy quit once they made the. Um, they kind of went through his house. They kind of what was it? The feds and everyone kind of went. You know, was it swatted his house? Would you say was that what it, mm-hmm. the term? Yeah. And when they pulled a lot of stuff, they realized, man, rated, there's a lot going rated, on. They rated, swatted. yes, yeah. sorry, rated. When they raided his house, there was a lot of stuff found. Was it dildos? I haven't heard that, but they, they, I, I maybe I can it's follow the up and tapes. Ask it's the tapes that they really want to find because if you are having people have sex on tape, and you are either blackmailing with that or you're selling it or, you know, whatever the case is, that's where I think the, the issue is going to come in because you're trafficking people, you know, you're, ma- you're making them have sex for money and stuff. That's, that's the big problem. Well, I think the lawyer is trying to say that, yes, there was some stuff that happened at these parties, but everyone was there at their own will. It was all consensual. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't think you're going to see celebs on these tapes. I don't think it's about celebs on the tapes because most celebs wouldn't have sex on tape, especially if someone else is wielding that tape. I think what it's going to be is who else was there watching while it was happening. You know what I'm what saying? What did you see? But also, I got to imagine if there's a lot of these tapes, there's got to be a celebrity, at least a celebrity on one of those tapes. Someone definitely um it's what it's going to be is unfortunately it's probably going to be more female celebrities that were their careers were held over their head unless they did it that's Uh, that's where it's going to be a problem do you think dax that your opinions or the public opinions on aubrey o'day are changing now with everything going on with diddy because she's been speaking out about him for a long time and no Mm. one has really took her back they just kind of let her as as a someone who's just screaming and barking on the side, but no one really kind of took what she was saying to heart. And now it's like, do we take oh, what I, she said seriously? I've never, I never, not you specifically, but the public has. The public has been not the nicest to Aubrey O'Day. Yeah. Um, well, I I think that it does put her in a different light to a lot of people out there. Um, we've been wanting to have her on for a long time. I'd love to have Aubrey on. Um, but she has been very vocal where a lot of people, I think she was, she wasn't afraid to be vocal against him for a long time, which wasn't necessarily the cool thing to do years ago. Now it's like anyone can come up and say shit about him because he's, he's in jail. Um, but I think she probably feels vindicated at the end of it. She probably just feels vindicated. Like finally, finally, this news is coming out. It's not me just screaming from a rooftop and no one listening. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what, though. I knew a lot about Harvey Weinstein before everything kind of came out. I didn't know that much about Diddy. I, mm-hmm. I think it was, people held what he was doing very close to their heart. I don't know. It was very weird. I heard the parties were a little crazy. There was some stuff out there, but it wasn't as strong, at least in my network, of what was going on at Diddy parties. Did yeah. you know that there was some really wild stuff going on at these parties? I mean, I, I knew about weird, freaky sex parties, but I guess I didn't know to what level or extent because I feel like someone like Diddy can have weird sex parties and a lot of people will participate in it. But then the level of making people have sex with sex workers and that kind of stuff, that's where you're like, oh, well... I didn't have that on one on my bingo card. I would have thought weird eyes wide shut kind of stuff where just rich people get together and all bang each other. And that's just some weird rich people shit. But um, the next level, it is what I did not expect. Yeah. Um, man, I never get invited to these type of parties. I'll tell you that. I don't, I don't <laughs> know why. I think I was just, I started judging all the people around like, ah, oh, like, are you going to these things and not inviting me? Like, why not me? It's just, <laughs> I, I, just, I, I had to take a deep dive in my own thing. Oh, Adam, we got to add this in real fast. Uh, this is breaking as we are recording, but Lana Del Rey, it looks like he's getting married. Uh, this is going to make everyone very excited because there are, for some reason, people are obsessed with Lana Del Rey. 
uh, but she has obtained a marriage license to get married to Jeremy Dufresne, I think is how you say his last name. Um, and that's her boyfriend. And according to the Laforge Parish Clerk of Court, Lana stopped by with her boat captain boyfriend on Monday and picked up a marriage license. And this is TMZ breaking this news. Um, it says that TMZ is told the marriage license has yet to be returned and recorded for the records. So it seems Lana and Jeremy haven't actually exchanged vows as of yet. Um, but it looks like they are intending to get hitched. Um, we know that they were romantically linked back in August and uh, they were spotted holding hands on an alligator tour ride in uh, at the Reading and Leeds Festival. So congrats to her. This is huge. Lana Del Rey getting married. That's yeah, fun. Yeah, people are going to hit me up. Everyone's going to hit me up now and say, what do you think about Lana Del Rey getting married? I'm like, dude, you messed it up. This could have been you. I could have been talking about how she uh, obtained a marriage license to get married to Adam Glenn. But no, yeah, you fucked I, it up, bro. I'm just surprised. Yeah, it's listen, she's married. Her. She, I guess the intention is to plans to marry a normal guy. He's not a celebrity by any means, which you don't see too often. Um, it has happened in Hollywood. Some c- celebrities have married normal people. Like I remember, actually, I knew the guy, this guy, Brandon, who Miranda Lambert married. I used to hang out with him, to, mm-hmm. not hang out with him outside of work, but when he was a cop, I used to see him and kind of hang with him all the time. So uh, I would, uh, during work stuff, because he used to work outside Good Morning America. So me and him would BS and we kind of went to like the same bars. Uh, yeah, I mean, they haven't officially got engaged though. Or maybe they are engaged. We don't well, know. But they they, they might. We just, are. yeah, we don't know that they are, but they are planning to get married if they're pulling a marriage li- license. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Lana of the right plans to possibly, potentially, allegedly get married to an alligator guy. That is the raw rundown. Thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on Red Coral Universe or maybe on YouTube. If you're listening, check out our private Facebook group called Off the Record. You should be in it because it's a really nice, fun community. Follow me at Adam Glenn. Follow Dax Holt at Dax Holt. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Guys, hope you liked that video. We got a lot more where that came from. Hit that bell, like, subscribe, share with a friend. The best thing to do support us is really doing that. And uh, we really need the money because we, we need hair gel. <laughs>